It really depends. Let's use a few examples. You know, um, the, the police, um, emergency services, fire service, in terms of augmented reality, you know, heads up displays and being able to see um, uh, maps of buildings, um, you know, um, actually uh, streamed to them. Um, the police looking for a burglar being able to, um, again, you know, search a, a, a building, um, but the plans being overlaid into, you know, into, into some device um, on their, uh, you know, in, in, in their eyepiece, um, all the way through to utilities where somebody, for instance, wants to um, fix, say, a, a, you know, a water main or an electricity substation, and they want to get plans up. Again, being able to automatically transmit this information to some device um, that you can see through through an eyepiece, um, won't say Google Glass, but something like this, um, you know, will 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 benefit them all. So I, I think if you if you if you look at it, once you provide that broadband pipe, the ability for all of these different types of um, of mission critical users to benefit from augmented reality, they'll all benefit from it. The question is, is how do you present it to them? I think, as, as we just touched upon there, you know, the, abil the ability to have some device that enables you to see this augmented reality. If, you, if you're saying, well, augmented reality is about holding up a device or having a you know, pair of glasses or something in your eye that you look at, or is it actually, you know, not just that, it, it's some other device that's on the arm that you can hold up and do, do something, something with. Um, so uh, that, that is key, is working out what, what is this wearable type device that you're gonna have. Once you've got that, how the application overlays uh, that data is really all about how, how and where do you get that data from and is that, is that information accurate? Because obviously, again, if you got called to search a building for somebody and the plan was out of date, it's not gonna work very well. So it's gotta be about accurate data and then what is the device that you want to present that on. If you overcome those two things, then um, you know, really augmented reality becomes an easy thing to deliver. It's been around for uh, probably actually about a year now, and it's been in development phase that's gone through. And there was a product that was launched at one of the CCWs by Motorola with a, a, a desktop headset um, and some software called GoldenEye. Um, and elements of that, that GoldenEye software provided everything from building plans to a talkable, wearable computer. You talk to it, it gets you information. It presents building plans. It does thermal image uh, imaging. Um, it does night vision. Um, it does lots and lots of, uh, of clever, clever things. And whilst that was in very much in prototype stage and is being developed, I think that's the best one I've, you know, that's that's the best one I've seen. To be honest with you, another one, another example is a company called Frequentis out there have built uh, uh, an augmented reality app that that will show you in a stadia or a crowd of people you can hold it up and it will show you where all the other police officer, uh, officers are in the crowd. So those sorts of things, being able to give you that information, um, they are being developed, but they are, they, are, they are out there, and they are very interesting. In the engineering world, in utilities, in transportation, then it helps a lot in other ways, because when we go to the, uh, some of the maintenance or the operations, sometimes, it may pop out some content sensitive help and also some menus, procedures that can help us a lot to, to, so that it can improve our productivity, streamline operations, and then help the, the, the people to do their job. Actually, uh, in utility, especially in CLP power or, or all other power utilities in Hong Kong, we, the first, the number one priority is safety. So in augmented uh, reality, I, it should help us uh, what, uh, what are the procedures, uh, what are we going to take, and especially important is whenever uh, the, the AR uh, would consider that there would be problem, then they may give alarms. So that would help to save the people's life and also quickly enhance our safety operations. 
for me, the, the big thing with uh, mission critical users and virtual reality has to be about training. You know, you look about what, what, what various users are doing out there, looking at virtual reality, um, whether that be specialist site operations or whether that be everyday sort of policing, and even vehicles and driving, being able to wear virtual reality headsets and recreate scenarios and incidents in order to, to be uh, better trained, better equipped, respond in a better way. That clearly has to be, um, has to be where virtual reality um, will play an important role. And that, of course, cuts down training um, budgets and, and training time and provides you, uh, you know, with a more, more, um, you know, more realistic uh, training environment. You can take yourself to any street in the world with virtual reality and you can recreate things that happen. So that, again, you know, if you think that that will aid the way our, our public safety um, officers um, do their job, um, again, you know, augmented reality and virtual reality, uh, they will definitely, definitely benefit.